Hey everybody. So Kaylina asked me to make this into an actual bag for her because it's like a nice little size for a phone and stuff. So we're gonna make a full bag with piping. Um, if you wanna watch the piping portion, that was last week's video. So I'll put a link uh, in the description or up in the top corner. Um, but in this video, we're gonna finish this out into a full bag. The first thing we need to do is we need to make some little D-ring attachments, which I have right here for an over the shoulder strap. Um, so these are just little half inch D-rings. Um, I have my strap cutter set to a half inch and this is some six ounce leather. We shouldn't need more than that because this is kind of a light duty bag. And then I'll check to make sure that this fits through like I want it to. There we go. So let's get these all burnished up and we'll set these in with some rivets and we'll have our uh, bag attachments. So we're going to install our little strap attachments here. Um, this is a two inch gusset, so all I did was I kind of put this in the middle roughly so I knew where I wanted it because I want this to land right at the top and be even. I have my divider set for one inch. So I'm just going to make a little line on each side. And this tells me where to stop so that you'll never see this once the strap attachments are installed. Go. Then all I'm going to do, I'm going to use this as my center line, and I'm just going to put that where I want it, and make a mark, and I know exactly now where to punch my holes for these to be centered on my bag. And there are plenty of ways you can do this, but when you don't have a pattern or anything, this is a quick way. Gets the job done. Once we have our D-rings attached and we're done with everything we want to install in the front of this thing, it's time to get the front installed on the back. Now for the back piece, I have a thicker piece of leather. This is seven, eight ounces. I've cut it to the same dimensions as my front piece because kind of like the, um, the tool holster, now that we've done all of this piping and we want to suck all of everything back in to be the shape that we want. So we're going to use this as our, as our shape. On the back here, I have the center marked on the bottom, and I have the center marked, and I have where I want my ends to go. I've left the rest long because we're going to have this fold over, but because I don't have a pattern, I don't know how long that needs to be. So I'm leaving it long for now, and we'll trim it once we have everything glued and stitched together. Um, one thing to note is, when I was doing this, it was just for the piping video last week. Um, if I knew I was going to make this into a bag, I would have skived this edge too. Now it's kind of too late, so we're just going to have to go with it and do our best. So now that we have our glue dry, I have my piece of paper here and I'm going to use this to prevent the top from sticking while I'm getting the bottom all lined up. I'm going to go in and use my little marks here. There we go. Now this is going to be pretty difficult, so I apologize in advance if the camera's not, camera angles aren't the best here. But I'm going to go in and get this as lined up as I possibly can. And it is going to be difficult because remember we're sort of stretching this back 
into place <coughs> from where it was with all the work that we've done so far. And again, the bone folder is going to be our best friend here, making sure that everything's nice and stuck down before we move on, um, because you're going to have a lot of tension in these seams for the glue to hold. So I've gone through and sanded and burnished all of our edges, but I'm not gonna... You didn't burnish, you no. liar. No. <laughs> okay. So I've gone through, I sanded down all the edges, beveled everything, and then did my finish sand down to 600 grit. I'm not gonna burnish from the curve up yet because we have to cut the shape of our flap, but I am gonna burnish this bottom because as you can see, I have one punch hole here that I kind of sewed through. This is gonna be part of how our closure system attaches. So I have to burnish this first because we're gonna have a strap coming out. I'm not gonna be able to burnish that afterwards. So now with the uh, very scientific process of figuring out how long our flap's gonna be, all I'm gonna do is fold that down, see where I want it, and I want it kind of right near the piping. So I'm gonna make a mark right there. And I'm just going to cut it flat and it should be okay. And it looks like we pretty much nailed it. I want this to come down right there. So we'll be able to, when we add our strap closure, we'll be able to make sure that that is closed right there and give us plenty of room. So now all that's left on the flat part, well, we have to sew in a closure too, but all that's left for the cutting is I'm just going to take, this is the curve that I used on the whole piece, and I'm just going to mirror that so that all the curves are the same by using this again. Part of our closure system, we're going to use a button stud. So I just have, um, I've brought my, I'm using the guides on my cutting mat, and I have lined everything up so that the ruler is placed where the curve ends, so I'm gonna make a mark right in the middle, and that's where we're gonna put our button studs so that visually you have the curve ending with the button stud right in the middle. It should just all be on the same plane, pretty simple. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little washer. I'm not gonna do any sewing or anything, but it'll just be a nice little detail. Um, and these things tend to perform best when they're really wedged in between some leather, so you don't want like a whole ton of extra threading, um, at least in my experience, so we're just gonna make a washer really fast. So to make our washer, I just have this big old um, hole punch. I don't know how big it is, but I use it for all my washers. Pop that out really quick. And then we're just gonna get a little hole punched in the center. These are pretty simple to install. You just take the threaded part Put that in. I'm going to take my washer, put that on, and then just screw our button stud on top. And you can put, I'm going to just kind of dry fit this, um, but you probably want to put a little dab of glue on the threads or Loctite before you like install it permanently. And there we go. We have just a nice little detail of that washer there. So now the last thing is we need our 
we need our strap that's going to come around from here to here. And here we go. So we have to keep in mind, you know, the leather is not super nice or anything because this started out as just a demonstration for last week's piping video, but we turned it into a bag and I really like it. You know, we didn't use the best leather, so it's a little crinkly, but Kaylina is going to use it. She'll get tons of use out of it. And the way the closure works, it's, remember, this is like eight, nine ounce. It's not broken in yet. So it's a little awkward to do right now, but once you break it in, it's just that simple. So if you want to get into it and you're in. And then once this breaks in, it'll be super easy to snap closed. I really like how this kind of spans the whole thing in the back. That'll <laughs> wear in really nice too. And otherwise, we have our piping. Again, remember, last week's video, there's a link in the description if you want to learn how to do hand piping. Uh, this is just one simple compartment, but I think in the future we'll do a nice big bag with the piping and all that stuff because you can add a lot of cool side pockets and front pockets. You can do pockets on the back and stuff. Um, but overall, for... You know, just something we were playing around with. I'm really happy with it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm going to go make a strap for this, and we will throw that on for the final shots. And we'll see you in the next one.